Hello and welcome to this session with the CAD Guild. In this session we are going to discuss some hands-on approaches in HBase with some important HBase commands and explore the different functionalities provided by the HBase from command line interface. Before we get started, make sure that your CAD Guild sandbox is running. I am using Mobax term to connect it with my Windows operating system. When you type JPS, you should have these processes running, including the Node Manager, HMaster, Secondary Name Node, Resource Manager, Name Node, and Data Node. If they are not running, then first try to use start-all.sh. This will start all the YARN and DFS related daemons. Once this is done, you may choose to use starthbase.sh. This will start the HMaster. The HMaster is responsible for the administration of the HBase. Once this is done, you can type the command HBase-shell. And this will take you inside the HBase command line interface. Which looks like this. Here you can type the commands like list and this will give you list of tables already present in the HBase. If you type version, you will get to know the version of HBase. In our case, it is 0.98.14. Now, let us take a look at the different functionalities and commands available in HBase. We have got a file to discuss this. We start with the create command. It will take the table name as first argument and the column families as the other arguments separated by the comma. Make sure to use single quotes around the table names and the column family names. In this case, a table with the table name customer with address and order column families is created. If you type list, you will find customer table is already present. How do you drop a table? If you want to drop a table, you have to disable the table in HBase. Always use single quotes around your table name. Once your table name has been disabled, then you can drop the table. If you try to drop a table which has not been disabled, it will give you an error. Now if you type list, you will not be able to see customer table anymore as it has been deleted. If you want to create it, just use the syntax for creating a table. Once your table has been created, we might like to insert some data into it. For insertion of data, put is used and for retrieval of data, get is used. First of all, we will put some data in the table. Put command will take the first argument as table name and the second will be the row key. Since HBase is a key value store, the first field it will take will be the name or the value of the row. Then it will take the column. The column is quite extensive here. We begin by specifying the column family, which must be existing, and then the column name. The column name need not be defined at the time of table creation. You can specify the column name whenever you want to insert the data. The final part is the value. That is the value that you would like to enter. Here we find that for the name John, the city is Boston. For John, the address part of the state contains a different value. For John, the address for street again contains another value. A different column family is order, which has got some other qualifiers, some other columns, and they have their respective values. Remember, we are performing five put operations, but they essentially are affecting only one record because they have the same key as John. If you want to see what is the content of the table, you can use scan. As of now, the table does not have any content. After you paste all these put operations and then scan your table, let's see what we find. We find these entries, but keep in mind this is only one record, but five different column values used for the same record. An interesting thing in HBase is the timestamp which is added automatically by HBase. 
You can supply your own timestamp as well. But if you don't, HBase will automatically add a timestamp field to a particular value. Timestamp has got a very important role to play when it comes to the versioning. Let's add one more entry to the HBase table customer, but this time for Finch. A Finch is a new row key in this example. If you would like to scan the customer table, you would be able to see that there are two rows. This is for Finch entries, and these are the entries for John. Now that we have discussed put, let's discuss get and delete. While using get, you can specify the table name, and then you can specify the row key. We can get all the entries for this particular row. This is the row key John for all the entries that are displayed out here. If you don't want all the entries or if you want entries corresponding to a specific column family or a specific column, you can do that as well. For the next argument, if you make the next argument as address, it will give you the column values for the column family address. You can drill around or narrow down your search by specifying the column qualifier as well. If you want only the city part of the address, you can get that. It all depends on how narrow you want to make your search. Delete operation is the next which we are going to talk about. If you want to delete a particular column, you can do that by specifying the table name, the row key, and the column which you want to be deleted. In this case, I'm going to delete the city part for John from the table customer. Now, if you want to get to that, you will receive zero rows as the address having city has been deleted for John. So, it is a very straightforward operation to delete. Now we are going to talk about versioning. Before we proceed, if you want to make changes in the table structure, you can specify that. Let us find out what is versioning. Sometimes it is important that whenever a data gets updated, you would like to know what was the value before the update. That is, you want one previous version. Suppose you specify version is equal to 5, then you will be able to see the current data as well as the last four previous values. These previous values and the current values are decided according to the timestamp. The values which have the highest timestamp is considered to be the latest, and the values with lower timestamp are considered to be the older value. The versions in HBase by default is 1. So for the table customer and for the column family address, I would like to make versions 5. That is, I want to store for all the columns present inside the address column family, and I would like to have the current value as well as the last four values. If this is the case which we are looking for, just make the change which will change the schema. Now, I'm going to perform a put operation on the customer. For the Finch address, the city is something which we are going to update. Put performs an operation known as upsert. If the key exists, it will update. If it doesn't, it will insert. So before we proceed, let us see for Finch and let us try to see what is the address. The address for the city is New York as of now. We will make it Detroit and San Francisco in the further operations. Once we do that, and if you want to get the city, it will be San Francisco, as it is the latest one. But if you want to take the previous values as well, it's quite simple. So just scan the customer, specify the column you are looking for, and then specify how many versions you want. Suppose I want three versions. If you do this, you will see for Finch, these are the three versions specified in the descending order of the recentness. That is, descending order of the timestamp. The latest value is San Francisco, but for the same row key, Finch, the same column had values Detroit and New York before San Francisco. This is how HBase maintains versioning information. This was all for this session. 
We talked about hands-on with HBase command line interface. We talked about put and get syntaxes and operations. We also talked about how to create and delete a table and how to maintain the versioning of HBase tables. For our next video on other Hadoop ecosystem components, stay tuned to a CAD guild.